So false prophecy versus true prophecy is um, number one, what's the source? Okay, like I, I've been asked, well, a psychic, are you, how are, are you a psychic? No, I'm not a psychic. What's the difference between you and a psychic? Well, uh, it's source, okay? So psychics, I'm not saying that they don't even have some level of act accuracy of supernatural things, but where they're getting their information from, from. I do believe that there's a very dark side that also gives information or there's supernatural that pertain to, to darkness, but it is God we're after. It is, is the words of the Lord that uh, a true prophetic voice is seeking to hear and seeking to communicate with. And it also has everything to do with life because Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and life. So it's from the spirit and it's also from the life uh, of God. Now in the Old Testament, they say, how would you know if someone is a true prophet or not, well, does their words come to pass? <laughs> so it's like you don't know until afterwards, right? Um, so here is is what I would say is, again, look at, is there a proven track record in somebody? We don't just let somebody who we don't know prophesy in our church, okay? So we want to judge the person as well as the word. So in other words, is that person known for their walk with God, for their heart of humility? Are they also known, let's say, for the proven track record in the prophetic? So, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to have somebody with a proven track record prophesy in a small group setting or whatever. I needed to learn, too, in, in smaller settings. But the fact is, when you're talking, let's say, a Sunday morning congregation, I would not let, let just anybody get up and pro give a prophetic word. It's like, who do we know are those among us that have been tested and proven in character? So... Um, the difference between a false prophet and an immature prophet. A false prophet would be somebody that legitimately has no intention of exalting Jesus Christ as Lord. They would at sometimes, you know, can come in uh, trying to disrupt or trying to be like, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing. Or um, again, there are uh, dark, there are those that, for example, worship Satan. I mean, I led a small group when I was a student in, in London, Ontario, and had a number of people coming to my small, small group who were trying to get out of Satanism, and I was like, oh my goodness, this really exists on planet Earth. Like, it was pretty, pretty dark stuff, you know? And there would be prophecies that would not be from the heart of God, um, but there's clearly, there are those who are intentionally not worshiping God, not loving God. I would call that more of, of a false prophet even if they seek to infiltrate the church, it usually, if you have a level of discernment, it usually is very obvious. But then there's the immature prophets or immature prophetic voices where they just are trying to grow. And that's where we want to help them. I have been an immature prophetic voice, you know, not always knowing the timing of when to give a word or, or needing to really sit on that word before speaking it. Do you know that not everything that God gives us prophetically is meant to be spoken? <laughs> Paul Cain said this, he said, prophets are known on earth for what they say, but they're known in heaven for what they don't say. So a lot of what God gives us is meant for prayer, that we're to pray, we're to, you know, dialogue with God. Amos 3, he does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. The Lord wants to reveal things that he wants to do on planet earth with his prophetic people or his prophets. But then it's also for us to pray into, to agree with God, to walk in this friendship with God. We're not always to speak everything that he says, but there will be the times where God does say speak. You know, personal prophecy, a prophecy over one person, or, or, or a word that's corporate, a corporate words. And so, of course, we want to be faithful with that as well. Um, so again, it's like uh, the heart after God to be a communicator of the Father's heart to his people and to nations and regions and cities and churches uh, with the heart that is captivated in love for him. The one thing I also I'll say about true prophets, Jeremiah 27 says this, if there therefore is a prophet among them, let him make intercession. True prophets will be marked by a life in God, like a, a prayer life, uh, intercessory prayer. Life. Look at the Old Testament. We've got people like Isaiah, or Moses, or Daniel. Uh, you know, these were all intercessors. John the Baptist, intercessors. Jesus, he's an intercessor. These are the true prophets will be people of prayer. They bring, they hear from God what he wants to do. They pray it back to him and the Lord does it and they walk with him very closely. So um, 
at least I've found it very easy to discern a false prophet from a true prophet. You know, the source, the spirit of it, your discernment kicks in. But those that are growing, those that are immature, let's help them. Let's help them. Let's 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 father them. Let's mother them. Let's let's um, teach them and train them. I've been both a prophetic voice in a church, and I'm a pastor in a church, and and I just find that that those that are wanting or have a le legitimate gift of prophecy in their life do need fathering and mothering and mentoring in this area to say, hey, let's let's use the gift, let's grow in the gift, and let's also test the gift, and let's also take ownership for where we're wrong. That's another thing is to, um, yeah, be, you know, ha have accountability for the words that you give. I gave a, a young man a word recently about running for parliament, uh, and, and he just didn't make the nomination just recently. And, you know, I apologized to him. I said, you know, I know that I... I really share with you that I felt you should run for nomination. He came back to say, oh, there's no need for forgiveness. He said, I felt that I should run as well. But he said, I would look at this as a real learning experience that I learned a lot by running for that nomination. So even if the prophecy didn't come to pass right now, it may very well in time after I continue to learn about what it's like to run as a member of parliament. So so that's good. That's a, that's that's very mature in his part. But we do need to take ownership for the words that we give. So, yeah, that's what I would say.